Hello, hello, and welcome everyone to round six of the Mentorless Go Mode Podcast Mentor Tournament. Uh, a little bit of an oxymoron there, but this week our runners will be running without the aid of their mentors. And uh, as I mentioned, this is open. So we'll have John the Branch versus the Crimson Polosh. Uh, with me is my co-commentator, Mocha Jones. Hey, good to be with you again, Asmar. How's it? It's going pretty good. Uh, we got Lumaga on the restream and Adalor on tracking. So uh, this just should be a pretty good race. Um, Mocha, what can you tell us about these two racers? Uh, well, I can tell you personally that John the Branch, uh, who actually uh, beat me week three in uh, Ambrosia Mentorless, he's a he's a pretty good runner. Uh, we ha we've been getting to know each other. He actually uh, did the VOD review of my race this week, and he's pretty knowledgeable. Um, Crimson, on the uh, I'm not that familiar with. I believe you you've uh, called one of their races before. Yeah, I uh, called Crimson versus Omega Toysk. Um, I don't. I am embarrassed to admit that I don't recall exactly how that race went. Um, it was. It was uh, I've, I've been doing a lot of these lately, so it's. Uh, we're, we're getting started though. Uh, let's see if we'll see Uncle Route from either or both of these two runners. We do have Uncle. Yeah, Uncle Route seems like it's been becoming uh, rather popular lately. Um, there are a couple reasons for that. Uh, especially in open, it allows you a chance to uh, get some of these kills before you do your tree pulls, which can provide you with some early game resources that can save you a little bit of roundabout backtracking. Yes, yeah, so we see the tier ones appears to be full magic, which uh, if we get some kind of magic out, it will be really good. Yeah, again, magic isn't great because it's not it's not one of those things that you really have a lot of use for early game what you really want to see from a tree pull is bombs because you don't have a lot of opportunities to do tree pulls and bombs are one of the things that is kind of easiest to run out of in early game yeah i have to agree with you there and there's a sword so will we see the escape play we may uh it's important to note that the items in the actual escape sequence, i.e. the sewers and the back, are not going to be in logic. So uh, it is a little bit less likely that we're going to see, you know, progression items there. But depending on the logic of the seed, anything could really happen. Yeah, so we see both runners taking different approaches at getting out of this area. With Chris taking bombs and uh, John taking the bushes and getting that tier two from John getting five. Yeah, so the idea there is there are three different tiers of tree pulls. I believe uh, it's kill four enemies without taking damage. Uh, kill, a I think, any enemies, uh, damage or not. Uh, something like that. Uh, and uh, kill no enemies. No enemies is uh, very often nothing. But we saw that uh, by killing those enemies, John was able to get a couple rupees. Yeah, I was going to say, if we don't, yeah, if Bombs wasn't the magic out or the, the tree pool item, I will rather see money. Yeah, the, the things that we would like to see from those tree pulls would be either, you'd really like to see red rupees, because that's a, quite a bit in, uh, in, in the bank towards, you know, you've got the bottle vendor in Kakariko, King Zora. Um... Uh, thank you, Garrison, in chat, correcting my uh, holes in my knowledge. And, of course, then we'd like to see bombs, especially if we're going to go and commit to the entire escape sequence. Uh, I imagine if we don't see any bomb drops off of enemies, we probably won't see the escape sequence I in its entirety. Uh, I would have to agree with that. But um, we, did, we didn't we did say this, but they got Fire Rod, so that full magic from the tree pool will probably come in handy here soon. Yeah, and uh, that actually may lead these runners to consider it. Uh, Fire Rod is usable in all of the rooms. Some of the rooms are a little harder to light than others, but it I'm could happen. Because the alternative would be to save and quit and go straight to Sanctuary, which is where they'd come out anyway. So if they think they can do the escape sequence fast enough, maybe take advantage of those uh, those uh, other checks. Yeah, it looks like neither of them are going to opt for it. I think the deciding factor is going to be the lack of bombs to open up that uh, secret room. In the 
when we do have Chris, I'm actually making that play. I'm wondering how comfortable they are with that. Yeah, he is with that dark room. Must be going for. It. Yeah, Crimson. Yeah, instead opting for that death warp, which doesn't uh, remove you from the front of the dungeon. It sends you back to where you entered. So th these dark rooms are. Uh, I I'd say they're sort of the uh, the second tier after say eastern or the mountain um especially with fire rod some of these rooms are pretty easy to light but if you transition floors it, it doesn't really matter yeah and we did see chris getting bombs and the bushcraft has bombs and so um they will definitely uh john will de or chris will definitely be full clearing the escape sequence while john will have bombs yeah, Crimson doing very nicely in that uh, dark cross room. It's, it can often be a little bit of a, a trick to, to find your find your uh, way to that chest, especially if you don't have a way to light the torch. Um, and that's one of the reasons that it can be really, really advantageous to sort of know your way around and know specifically where those torches are. If you're used to always going through with the lamp, you may not even really have any memory of where the torches are. Yeah, so, uh, fun fact, I just, like, right before this race, I was practicing that, just so I can just see what happens if that were to come up in this race, and going from the bat, it, that's hard. And so we have seen both the key and the lamp, which means that, uh, we will be seeing what's Crimson open up the Sanctuary chest. Uh, ordinarily, if you have seen... If you haven't seen one of those two items, well, if you go all the way through, then you sort of assume that you've seen the, the small key. But uh, if you haven't seen the map, then you know that that's going to be in the last in in the last chest that's in Sanctuary because that is part of the same item pool. Yeah. Map check on John's side. And we have a five six crystal, the red crystal, at Tower of Hera, and uh, Desert and Eastern are both. Yeah, Corvid pointing out that uh, rather than save and quit to the Sanctuary, Crimson opts to complete the rest of the dungeon. Uh, recently, they did um, remove the save and quit delay. And with the save and quit delay, it it's generally would have been slower, I think, to uh, actually save and quit than, you know, quickly run up those stairs through the couple rooms. And just, just a moment here. We got Quake. We got uh, Moon Pearl. We got flippers, we got mushroom, and blonde. Yeah, interesting to note that these are items that both runners are going to be picking up, but with Crimson taking the play through um, the Hyrule escape section uh, and not really getting rewarded for it, John has a little bit of an edge here uh, because he'll be able to put off those checks until it's perhaps a little faster to do so. Or, you know, maybe even never at all if we uh, if we get lucky with our seed here. Yes, and um, John did get the half magic gun. There's Ice Rod too. But John got half magic in the, the Thieves drop. So Prince is about to get that right. Yeah, and I what? always mention about these early early game checks that since they're pretty standard for both runners nobody's going to be getting an edge with it but with the with the difference in routing john getting them earlier it, it it is a little bit of an edge to john here it's it's not as um not as clear cut as as uh it could be in the later game we see the chicken having some uh having some fun in the wall there yes uh we have a safety getting item with the button at and we're gonna go check the, the bottle kit right now see that's a very nice bow yeah especially with the eastern palace being a crystal and those dark rooms as they mentioned being relatively easy um i would imagine we see this uh south shore into uh into an eastern play maybe they pick up the flippers checks I mean, it is early flipper, so why? Well, you could make an argument that uh, it could make sense to 
do the flippers checks after you full clear the eastern area. But you could also make the argument that if you need to do pod as well, you could maybe get away with putting off eastern and doing them both, both together, which routes together really well. I'm curious um, if we find a lift item, if anyone would go to the Zora era area and then come down that way to head towards. Uh... Yeah, it's possible. Um, I that's another thing with with this seed being so front loaded we still only have a couple of access items so we do have to see a couple of those before we really start opening things up that weren't already open it's really just the flippers checks that that you have over a your your ordinary not front loaded seed here um so this is a really nice way for it to be front loaded if it, if you have a lot of access items like hammer you know both glove upgrades hook shot then things can start to really kind of get hard to untangle in sort of the mid game of the seed. Yeah. And we already have someone wanting mirror on pet. Corvin, if that happens, I as a runner would be frustrated. It could be no big deal. It could be no big deal. We don't know what our Dark World dungeons are. We could have non required uh, swamp palace and we could end up seeing book for desert. So, uh, mirrorless seeds are a thing. Oh, yes. I, I have played one, and it's not fun, especially when you have... Yeah, there are a lot of things that are that are really a lot easier to route with mirror. Um, Desert Palace is one of them. Palace of Darkness is another. Um, the Smith Chain is just outrageously more difficult to route without the mirror so uh john taking up that health back at um from the dam that's i believe our first this is not a healthy yeah that's all right as long as we get health before we start Doing some of the Dark World dungeons. Yeah, we see Crimson opting to pick up that piece of heart. Probably specifically for that reason. You usually don't want to go out of your way to grab those. But uh, if you haven't seen very many, you may want to may wanna load up. Let's see where John's going to go. If he'll decide to take those slipper checks or go to Ice Rod Cave or what. I would, I would imagine Ice Rod Cave. Because you, you just translate that straight into those flippers checks. You could opt to leave it, but, you know, it's that's a gamble. It's a gamble you take less often than Agina's cave, I feel. But you kind of, a lot of the time, you kind of want to pick one or the other. You're playing with fire if you just leave both of them. It does save some time, but it's, it's a lot more often not. Yeah, uh, I think it's actually my seat with John. No, it wasn't. But um, there has been more often than not a good item in. And well, there we have the lamp. It's it's a it's not a super necessary item, especially for uh, more experienced runners. But uh, it's it's definitely nice to have, and it helps you sort of figure out the logic of the seed. Because now, as soon as we find the first glove upgrade anything on death mountain is in logic um i mean anything that is you have access to sometimes you get the glove and can go up there suppose you have the hook shot then you have access to the right side there's a lot of checks over there but you know that unless you find the lamp or the flute none of that was considered logical progression by the seed and you can sometimes try to work out where the progression you're looking for is likely to be based on stuff like whether or not it's in logic, especially in early game. Yes, and there's a discussion in chat about Eastern Palace being in logic or fully logic. Uh, Eastern was in broken logic before we found the lamp. So we could secrets break uh, Eastern by just navigating through the dark rooms, but now it is fully in. Yeah, 
Yeah, and that's logic is a lot more important for item location considerations than for dungeon clears. Dungeon clears, you don't care if it's if it's not in logic, who cares? Go ahead and clear it. You got to get them all for the or all the crystals anyway for for Ganon's tower and and fighting Ganon at the end. So I it's not often that you see anybody hold off on Eastern Palace just because it's not in logic. Oh no, especially you know, with us being six weeks in, I'm pretty sure most of our runners have at least practiced Dark Eastern Palace. And Dark Eastern Palace is, is relatively free. The Igor room after the big key door is a little bit dicey, um, but that's usually if, if you don't have any sort of strategy planned for it. Yes, I, I will admit I have died in there. And fairy graces John with a B. I'm sure he's thrilled to see that. B is extremely useful for, uh, say, the blind fight, maybe Mothula. I think it's just Moth. Uh, I, uh, I, I have it on maybe questionable authority that uh, it works on blind as well. I've tried it. I'm gonna, blind. I'm gonna call it Gorte. I have tried it on blind. It did not work. Unless it was a golden bee that it works on, which I'm not sure. But um, just an overview of check so far, it was blue boomerang uh, in the Zora area, and it was blue mail on the Lake Halia Island. And yeah, neither, neither runner having the money to pay the piper, as it were. So we see the route straight over into the Eastern Palace area. We'll likely see a pendant check uh, on Sahasrila. He mentions where the green pendant is, which is helpful if it's not a light world dungeon, because then you know which dark world dungeon it is, which can sort of affect your routing a little bit in certain situations. We see, yeah, John's going for it. Dark Palace. So as I was mentioning earlier, it can sometimes be really useful to route Dark Palace into uh, Eastern Palace. And there we find the flute. Uh, so either way, Mountain would have been in logic early enough. We don't really want to go up there. We don't have the hook shot. So uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on in this seed. Yeah, and we're finally going to get into a crystal dungeon. Yeah, it's, it seems uh, personally, I find early bow to be re relatively rare. It's one of those things where it's not actually unlikely, but it's if you start seeing something more than once, it starts feeling like it's unlikely, and that can sometimes even affect your your routing decisions. Uh, but uh, I digress. Uh, with the bow, we can full clear Eastern Palace, and especially knowing that Pod is a pendant, there's no real reason to keep putting it off. There's three checks in here. Uh, you know you can do the whole thing. You got to do it at some point anyway. And the value of routing it in with pod just diminished quite a bit, finding out that pod is the green pendant. We may have to see a pod dip later on, but that can be something that can be put off if necessary. Yes, and who knows if we even need to go in the pod. It's likely just cause of the item density in pod, but who knows what we'll find on the way. Yeah, of the pendant dungeons, pod is often it's it's sort of more often uh, necessary. I miss what that item was back there in the. Let's see. Oh, there's a hearts. It is worth noting that we aren't, we don't haven't seen a single item that is likely to take Aghanim out of logic yet. Um, we haven't seen it heavily hinted, uh, no cape, but we do have the lamp and a single sword. Yeah, don't think that hasn't already crossed my mind. Because for logic for Aga, we need a sword, 
We need a cape or something to break the barrier. A lamp. In order to take Ognim out of logic for Dark World access, you'd need some other way to access the Dark World. And the only ways to do that without defeating Ognim are either... You need two items for it. You need a glove and either another glove or the hammer. Yes. We haven't seen any of those yet. We do have so the power are... glove. Oh, did we? Uh, I must. Uh, I was dealing with uh, some tech issues, so I must have missed it. Yes. So yeah, we the power glove, glove was out. So that that uh, definitely puts uh, a Death Mountain climb in logic. But I imagine we will see our runners hold off until uh, we find either the mirror or the hook shot. Maybe even the. Yeah, if we find the hammer and the mirror, then that, then it would definitely be a big play. But uh, you generally want to think one item ahead, in my experience, um, when you're considering how you're gonna route things based on what you what you see. So uh, you, if you see mirror, then you can go to Hera. That's not super juicy. Um, it, it is a pendant. You have, or it is a crystal rather. You have to do it at some point anyway. But it's not as juicy as just the hook shot. Which, without Hammer, you can't do Hera, but you do have access to Paradox Cape, which is a lot of checks. Now, here's something that the runners could do. After clearing uh, Eastern, saving quick, go to Sank, activate that flute, and head directly to Desert. Well, actually, never mind, they don't have book. For some reason, I thought... Yeah, I would imagine we see... Um... John do that. Not not go to desert, but uh maybe save and quit to sank because with the glove now back of escape is accessible. And that's that's an easy three checks to do. Um if it's nothing, then you know, whatever, you go and activate the flute like you were planning. But with that, John will only end up orphaning uh Dark Cross from the escape sequence. And uh able to get to those three checks much quicker than Crimson was. All right, so let's see what our runners are going to do from here. There's a saving quit from Crimson. Let's see. Yeah, um, chat pointing out Oro, noticing that Crimson, uh, skipping Vanilla Big Key and catching up in that uh, dungeon progression there. And actually taking a slight lead, but it's also early game, so they've been married. Yeah, Link to the Past Ken uh, mentioning that Dark Cross was a key, and uh, after checking this, John is going to know this. So again, like I mentioned earlier, that time that Crimson spent in the escape sequence, um, is is going to sort of all come to naught because John is going to be able to knock out all of the time that Crimson took on that whole sequence in just a few seconds here. Opening this chest, this chest, this chest, and now if they're paying attention, they know that the last chest is going to be that small key. Yes, and Crimson activating that flute, and let's see. And cashing in the mushroom, that's a really good play, just considering how early. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where, especially if you see the flute, then the mushroom just kind of becomes, okay, well, now whenever I have time, otherwise you're trying to think of when you can route it into other checks. It's just a piece of heart, but since we found that flute, the time investment becomes negligible. Otherwise, that can be kind of an iffy if he if he check to make because you you sort of want to put it off until it's convenient the reducer crimson going up the mountain to yeah, interesting to note that with the current item loadout only two checks on mountain are available the old man and the item inside spectacle rock which is a relatively lengthy check um 
conceivably um no we can't because we're we're missing the hammer but if we had hammer we could maybe check spike cave as well but uh without either the cane of C cane of burnout or the cape it's uh, out of logic that's strike one for the mountain on, on crimson side yeah just some blueberry some bombs though there. we see john making the same play but saving saving himself the uh agony or maybe could pay off for him if he has three quarter hearts now uh, i regrettably missed exactly what crimson did in eastern palace but uh from from the sound of it it's something i'm unaware of personally <laughs> so uh it's uh, kind of a shame that I missed it. Ooh, another another set of bombs. So that's all we've got on this mountain here. If I'm not mistaken. Man, um, it, it, is this... Uh, I mean, there's a lot... Goron's special crop. Yeah, we see Crimson going to the desert. Uh, this, this is kind of a my hand is forced kind of play. We haven't seen a lot of world access items. We have the glove, but on its own, that doesn't allow you to do too much. Um, yeah. You need to combine it with, you know, the hammer or another glove to uh, really, really get access to different parts of the world. It really only lets you climb up to that first area of the mountain. And, and there's our second. So yeah, that's that's one of the rare cases where you are sort of forced to go to Agina's cave early. It, it's often, you know, it's just one check. You can leave it until later. But getting to this point and not having seen any of those critical items, hammer, hookshot, that, that give you access to some of these higher check density areas, yeah, that that's really the your only option that's left. Now, something I'm curious why Crimson didn't do. I wonder if uh, John will. Nope, he's gonna save and quit as well. I personally probably would have um, gone out of a Guinness cave and flew to eight, and go ahead and check Mars shed while I'm down here. But I guess you can do it. Eight. Yeah, I I personally would prioritize getting straight to village of outcast because that gives you access to two dungeons unlikely for both of them to be pendants you have the fire odd so you know you can full clear both of them um it, it's that would be prioritizing game progress over a slightly convenient you know two check gamble maybe you can go in go into mire if the if if the medallion is right but you're hoping you find hook shot or boots in one of those two things otherwise you know it's the value is pretty low unless you're really lucky yeah yeah i just know that several seeds that have been played lately have had some kind of progression in it in marsh yeah it's not a bad play um this is Meyer shed is is only locked behind a few items so logically it's not hard for the algorithm to put an important item in Meyer shed all right so we did have a map check um we had, let's see, uh, uh, Pendants and Swamp and Skull Woods and the other 5-6 Crystal and T-Rock. Yeah, CJ in chat pointing out that with the uh, Mitts and Flute available so early, that can be uh, a relatively good indicator of something important in Myershed. Uh, as John finds in uh, C-Shaped House, the Silver Arrows. Something that is not super common to find this early. Yeah, and that's gonna make clearing a lot of bosses so much easier. Yeah, so desert that make Lamos pretty, pretty. Yeah, it's a little unfortunate that uh, Palace of Darkness is a is a pendant, uh, because uh, it. After you break the mask off, it kills Helmosar in one hit. Um, also kills uh, Argus in one hit, which is uh, notably Swamp Palace is a pendant. So as alluded to earlier, uh, we may not need the mirror here. Ooh, and first when... in dig game. Wow. 
Uh, gonna I'm gonna take advantage. Maybe maybe get his money's worth here. Did game not really paying out here? Oh, there we go. There's some rupees. Three. Ha uh, ha. Uh. There they are. He wanted. It's nice to get a couple of red rupees out of there. At least get your money back, you know. Yeah, it's a little unfortunate that uh, we didn't see more earlier, because uh, then, then you maybe could have decided to skedaddle before he tells you it's time to go. Save, save that. Uh... Yeah, CJ and Chad again pointing out Crimson decided to death warp straight out of Thieves Town. Perhaps uh, a little nervous for the lack of the hammer. I, I didn't notice whether or not the small key made an appearance. If it did, then that could be a factor in there. Um, it, the small key opens the path to the big chest, which can only be accessed with the hammer. So if if you, there's something important in that big chest, committing to a full Thieves Sound Clear at this point could force you to come back later. Um, so depending on what you find in the front, it can tell you whether or not it's a good idea to dive into the back without having hammer. In most cases, I personally think it's worth it to clear Crystal Thieves Town, um, as long as you make sure you don't forget that there's still a big chest in there. Oh yeah. Um, as my mentor has told me several times, always clear Crystal Thieves But I can understand the the hesitation, maybe, just because they are on Green Nail Fighter Sword with no uh, with no safe. Yeah, in Thieves Town, uh, the, the sword isn't a big deal because uh, the, the enemies in there actually have remarkably low health. Um, it only takes a single spin attack from the Fighter Sword to kill the blue ones, just two for the reds. Um, and Blind himself doesn't, he's only a strict number of hits, doesn't take extra damage. So, Thieves Town, in my opinion, is, is a very good dungeon. If you want to up your randomizer game, you need to be competent at early game Thieves Town. Um, because there, there are so many situations in which it presents itself early to you, and you can lose a lot of time by needing to put it off because you're not comfortable with the gameplay. most of like I said it's a it might be a comfort thing who knows just because of how even though they might the enemies might take little hits to kill they can still hurt like a truck especially yeah that's true um it, it's one of those things where it, it really it really depends on your comfort comfort with the execution um it, namely, there, there's a little bit of a hell way with, you know, the there's anti-fairy spikes flying around the place. It, that's an easy place to take some hits. And, and it can put you at low health, and you're sort of forced to choose between, okay, do I, do I do this fast or do I do it safe? And if you can safely put off the back of Thieves Town, come back later, when you can do it fast and not have to worry about it, that can actually add up to a time save. So it, it's... It is a it is a comfort thing. If you're comfortable in your execution and know that you can do that some of those rooms fast, reliably, and know that you're going to be fine for the boss with no safeties like the Cane of Burner or the Cape, uh, King Zora gives us a red rupee. Such a scam artist there. Yeah, I didn't notice what was on Zora Ledge. It was a boomerang, the, the best boomerang. Yeah, interesting to see Crimson decide to go pick that up. It's it's of limited use, um, something you like to have, but it seems a little strange to me to go all the way to Zora Ledge to to go grab it. Uh, it, it depends what he has planned next. He, he, it may be faster to not save and quit here, like we see John doing. John's going for the save and quit. Decides that Bloomerang isn't quite trained. I wonder what any either one of them make the the flight to six, and there it is. There's Crimson going. Interesting to grab the the boomerang if if that's the plan. But hey, the it's a it's a sexy boomerang. Maybe it's a uh, for the stun prize. 
I don't. That's that's true. It it does give you access to that stun prize, but having checked Zora, the value of the stun prize goes down. Uh, it, it can sort of give you an edge if the stun prize ends up being 20 rupees or something, then it lets you farm with rupees a little more conveniently. But since we just checked Zora, the stun prize isn't really something that's worth spending time on. Because now the best it could be is, is a fairy or something. Yeah, and now we have... We got the Marsha check, and it wasn't really... And now we see John heading into Thieves Town. We'll see if John decides to fully complete this dungeon. So I'm curious, will one of them make the play towards uh, towards uh, Pod? Since um, we can get through majority of it. Yeah, and it is not the worst to access, honestly. Um, the, the issue is the arrow locked chests. There are two checks over on the arrow locked side of Palace of Darkness. And to sort of combo that into any other checks in the rest of the dungeon, you need to really have the hammer or the mirror. Um, because otherwise you kind of have to do a death warp and it's kind of awkward without both of those items. So that sort of forces you to do those last. Um, so the routing right now of Palace of Darkness is really awkward. Add that to the fact that it's a pendant dungeon. We're probably gonna see these runners hope that uh, that's not the answer. We see John continuing to the back of Thieves Town as Crimson decides to dip into Skull Woods. I like both yeah. of these plays. Um, I'm always an advocate of finishing Thieves Town. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be. It, it feels faster than it is, but it's the barrier for entry is so low that uh, the more times you dedicate yourself to doing Thieves Town early, the better you get at it, the more you can get an edge uh, over it. Going through that hellway that I mentioned earlier. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, speaking of pendant dungeons, we have Skull Woods being checked, which only has two items. So if they're both in the front, Hey, I'm completely game with doing Skull Woods. Yes, yeah, so Skull like Woods is such a on, weird dungeon. Yeah, yeah, it's making on both of them being in the front. Though. Um, yeah, because with because there are two checks in the fire locked side. They have fire rods, so it's not a big deal. But if if you get into Dark World without fire rod, some people sort of consider those checks the same as uh, Overworld checks. Like you know, it's you just go in there and you just check them. But it is entirely possible for both of the item checks in the dungeon to be locked behind Fire Rod, an item that you may not have access to. So it, it becomes a little bit of a of a time investment, especially if it's on that area. We do see one here. We find the cape. Yeah, I believe the the first item was three hundred rupees in the in the first chest. Okay, so we have seen both the... items. Uh, I would imagine we do see a full clear here at this point, though. Um, it may be a little iffy with just the fighter sword, but uh, you see, we see Crimson backing off. Maybe not so confident in the fire on Mothula fight. Uh, or, or maybe thinking, I got both items, I'm noping out of here. Yeah, I mean, at this point, if you get your last item any deeper than this front area, I think I would, I would full clear it if the opportunity was available. You know you don't have to go back for that second chest in that back area. Um... And with half magic, that Mothula fight can be manageable, but it really depends on your comfort level with doing the uh, fire rod strats with that battle, because at this point, there, there's really no other option. you got to use that fire rod. And just looking on John's side, not having a key, getting the maiden, that means that John's probably going straight to go fight block. Yeah, so we, we, also have we didn't and black. see that key, which uh, in my mind makes the decision to to leave thieves town early a little bit questionable in my mind um because again if you may even have the option of skipping the chest and getting every item in the dungeon you may as well clear it um as uh, was pointed out in chat earlier both of these runners are two and three um so unlike the last uh match that i casted uh earlier this weekend uh both of those runners were five and zero um 
with a few more losses under their belt, we may be dealing with runners that, you know, maybe don't have the same level of comfort on some of these tricky bosses. I would consider Blind and Mothula both to be rather difficult bosses as we see John take a death. It can get really chaotic. Yeah, and just throwing this out there, one of the items that Crimson did get in Skull Woods was the cape. So that would make that blonde fight just a little bit easier. Yeah, definitely. Um, in my mind, what would be going through my head is, okay, I go, I could go back, fight Mothula with the Fire Rod, and sort of translate that into a, ch a check of the, uh, you know, sort of upper area of that. Uh, I mean, given the items that we have, we don't have Mirror, we don't have Boots, so it's not a great deal. But you could check Bumper Cave, because that's an item that you can check for free, and knowing th where that cape is, you could check that right away. I'm just curious if our runners know how to do that check without the hookshot, which is not that hard. Yeah, but some just... people have mentioned that it's it, it's rather tricky. I've never had trouble with it, but that's the way some of the tricks in these games go. Um, I am actually a rather notorious for not not using you know most tech. Uh, it's just a preference of mine, but uh, I've never had any problem with the hookshotless bumper cave. Ooh, and John using that blue potion just in time as he gets cornered by blind. An important note, too, about that hookshotless bumper cave strategy, it is considered by logic to be um, valid. So while, you know, navigating dark rooms without a fire source, uh, for example, even the relatively easy climb of Death Mountain, uh, you know, rescuing the old man without the lamp, that's in my mind, arguably just as easy as uh, doing Bumper Cave without Hookshot. But Logic does not consider Dark Mountain Climb to be valid, but it does consider Hookshotless Bumper Cave to be valid, at least with advanced item placement, which I believe we are using here. Yes. Um, the reason for that, I believe, is because there's not a lamp that we can light with the Fire Rod in the Own Death Mountain. Yeah, that is, is there... another difference between basic and advanced is advanced considers if there's a torch to be lit, then fire rod grants logical access to that area. It kind of, it kind of bugged me when they made that change. <laughs> I was like, it requires you to actually know where those torches are. And I was like, I didn't, I never bothered. And I just followed logic like a, like a little boy. Yeah, we have Chris. I'm actually getting phase two of the script on blonde and getting his first crystal. Yeah, Crimson with a nice blonde fire. Yeah, Walther in chat pointing out the small key to enter the room containing the big chest is inside the big chest contained in the room, requiring the small key to access it. I think that is my favorite piece of logic in Thieves Town. Because... Sim similarly, uh, the two dungeons that don't require the big key to access the boss, uh, namely Skull Woods and Swamp Palace, can both have the uh, big key inside of the big chest. And that actually brought my attention to the fact that Skull Woods is a pendant, which is probably why we didn't see a clear of it. Yeah. <laughs> If Skull Woods was a pendant, 100% you go you go for that uh, Fire Rod uh, Mothula strat. If you have half magic, it's it's dicey if you don't have half magic. If you do have half magic, it's it's a lot more lenient. But since it's not going to pay off, if it was a green pendant, maybe you'd go for it. But even then, it would be pretty a pretty aggressive play. So we do have both runners doing Smith Chain. I'm curious uh, with Cranston having that cape if he'll make his way over towards Bumper Ledge at any time soon. Yeah, it, it there's a few items that if we see up there, you'd feel really good about seeing it there right now. But there are a lot more items still left to see. You know, we may see the Cane of Samaria on there. That wouldn't be the greatest item to see. Yeah, you need it, but it's not going to... Uh, affect your routing that much you know if you find the mirror up there that would be great to see right now because that would really help you optimize your routing later on we see john going for the ice palace play 
I like this because he doesn't have the cane of Samaria. And that just makes me happy on a personal level. You want to see IPBJ. No, I, I just uh, I just resent Icebreaker. I, I like to respect Ice Palace and by, by, you know, seeing most of it rather than, you know, doing it backwards and just mis mistreating the poor dungeon. And Chris, I'm doing as I thought and doing, uh, checking this carpenter cave and it has a shovel. So, uh, mm, it, that's it, an interesting, that's the most interesting thing we could see because it, it still could be any of those items. So now you have to both consider what are the possibilities that could be behind that shovel and uh, is it still worth the time to invest right now? I mean, if you're there, Bumper Cave isn't super long, but. Oh, Esmar, they're calling for you to be banned in chat. Yeah, on a, on a very real note, uh, this Ice Palace dive is very questionable because even, even setting Icebreaker aside, which is, is a fantastic glitch that anybody getting into um randomizer racing it really owes it to themselves to to learn if if they want to win i don't so i have i don't use it um it can be both hookshot locked and samaria locked based on the key logic so while it is possible to complete it without either of those items you're it, you're really taking a gamble diving down here that it will even be possible to complete also no hammer so even if you can get to the bottom without Hookshot, without Samaria, you may not find the hammer in here. There are only three checks. This is a very strange play. Yes. Um, meanwhile, Crimson is heading towards Catfish to see if we have two scams in one today. Yeah, another note on Ice Palace. This would make a lot more sense if we just had the cane of samaria because with the cane of samaria you can access a lot of chests rather early so you may be able to get those three checks in this dungeon out of the way early and it would maybe make sense as a gamble on uh you know maybe you find an item it's a required double dip of ice palace something like that oh, without the cane it's a he it's a really big time investment for a just a gamble very nice uh strat on those uh skeletons there that, that tells me that uh john seems to be ra rather comfortable with this uh with this routing of this dungeon because that's uh not often uh, a room that pe that an icebreaker user would uh tend to see a lot yeah and uh catfish was just a scam and john is oh never mind he has a red potion so he's gonna have full hearts um whenever he tries his icebreaker but uh, not icebreaker ice palace bomb john we're gonna see John setting that up here. Very nicely done. That's not a trivial bomb jump to make. It, it may look easy. Um, it looks like you're just sort of blasting yourself across the gap, but it, it really requires you to uh, utilize the uh, sort of awkward edge mechanics that this game has. Um, I, I remember just casually, I tried to set up a bomb jump and it's like, oh, it, it doesn't work. If you don't set it up right, the bomb just knocks you into the pit and you fall. Um, so it's it's, it's it's not trivial to do that at all and it's very easy to, to fail that one in particular because your angle needs to be very precise uh, and we have a hook shot on the pyramid yeah the gamble for ice palace not exactly playing out for john here um as vortex mentioned um it, it is it does make most sense to take a big gamble like this early there really isn't enough leading me to believe that this gamble really makes any sense at all, though. Um, it's It would be a galaxy brain play to find something that we need in here. Yeah, um... I just don't... I wish I, wish I knew uh, what John was looking for in Ice Palace. Maybe even but, forgetting Hammer hasn't shown up, <laughs> honestly. Because uh, if we see Hammer with Ice Palace bomb jump, you know, if if you know if, if everything's friendly enough, you know, we we could see a full clear. Granted that we have the Hammer, uh, I have been guilty in the past of forgetting that Ice Palace actually requires the Hammer. Um, there are two places that can remind you. Uh, one of them is on the way up to the Vanilla Big Key Chest. The other is. Uh, 
right here in uh, the next room after this switch that John's going to come up on. Uh, I have yeah. in the past forgotten that you actually need the hammer in this room. Uh, yeah, I, th I think John forgot that the hammer uh, didn't show up. That makes the Ice Palace play make a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah. That's got to that's got feel terrible. <laughs> like, how, how could I forget that you need the hammer in Ice Palace? It, it, I mean, it's pretty easy. You know, if, if, if you haven't... Uh, if you haven't had a lot of seeds where... It, it, so, okay, we, we imagine that we have a lot of seeds that we see early hammer. That can make it really easy to forget the things that you can't do without it. Um, and and that's, that's one of the traps that's easy to fall into until you have loads and loads and loads of seeds under your... And also wonder how, how much of that is uh, seed meld just from playing so many seeds. Yeah, I have also been guilty of uh, once I last location an item on Lake Hylia Island because I was convinced I checked it because I'd checked it that afternoon in a different seat. So, Crimson doing the uh, Spiral Cave. Hoping for Hammer? Ha well, I mean, at this point, you got that access to Death Mountain. You found that hookshot. There's a lot of checks over here. You just go ahead and check everything. If you find Hammer, great. If you don't, oh well. You know, it, it was a sensible play. It was safe. It made a lot of sense. Um, it'll be interesting to see. I think we're going to see a combo into Dark World because we can check Super Bunny Cave, Hookshot Cave. We can't check uh, Floating Island. I didn't notice what it was, but, uh, you know, it's an option. We can also check and see which uh, medallion opens up Turtle Rock. Yes, um, it was just five bucks, if I'm not mistaken, on the floating island. And so we are now in Super Bunny Cave. Um, you want to explain why that's called Super Bunny Cave for those who may not? I can. I can explain why it's called Super Bunny Cave. There is a glitch referred to as Super Bunny. When in the dark world, without the moon pearl, Link famously transforms into a, a, an adorable little pink bunny rabbit. Um, this adorable little pink bunny rabbit is entirely defenseless, has, has no abilities whatsoever. However, the developers never intended for this bunny to do certain things. Um, namely, fall down a hole. And if you do so, once you screen transition in that manner, the game is confused, thinks you're just regular Link, and allows you to perform actions that you usually can't as a bunny. Notably, opening chests. So if you have the Titan's Mitts in that area, and you don't have the Moon Pearl yet, then you can check those chests absolutely for free because you have to fall down a hole to get to them and we have two out of three medallions now if we had at some point in any of these checks found the cane of samaria and we go over to turtle rock and discover that we have the medallion for it we go down turtle rock unfortunately we haven't seen the cane so that uh you know that uh that prophecy is unfulfilled. And just to that out there, we have medallions for both dungeons. We have um, Quake for T-Rock, and we have Bombos for Meyer. Vortex mentioning, uh, without Hammer or Mirror, um, you could wait a little bit on the mountain, because that does open up more of the mountain, plus a crystal dungeon. Um, and that's sort of a play you make depending on what else is available in the world at the time. Since we haven't seen either runner dive into pod and we have the flute. Um, well, I mean, the flute without the hammer doesn't grant the easiest access to Palace of Darkness in, in the runner's defense. But I would I would sooner dip into pod than go up the mountain w w without hammer or mirror. Uh, because if you make the mistake of going up the mountain too many times, it's... Uh, it can start to build up. Yes. My, I don't think I've seen it, but has Crimson cast in that shovel yet? No, we have not seen that yet. Um, I would imagine we see him pick up the... I See, I, I was thinking, okay, you know, you can work in the shovel check to uh, in with the purple chest. But only if you've got the mirror. If you don't have the mirror, then it, it really doesn't make that much sense to go over there. 
Yes, and just also, we did get Master Sword up on the mountain. Yeah, that's true. Um, notably, um, that is the only sword upgrade that is logically required to complete the game. I think uh, I don't require if it, I don't re recall if advanced logic, uh, you know, it will allow for silver lists. Either way, we've seen silver, so it's not a not really relevant. But you cannot defeat Ganon unless you see more than one sword. Ooh, we see John not routing his Skull Woods very efficiently. Hasn't found both of those checks yet. Or, or perhaps miscounting? It's it's kind of hard to miscount to two. Sure. Now, uh, Sen, wondering why John was uh, sort of going up towards Mothula. One possible reason would be with that... Uh, uh, dare I say it, Numbskull Ice Palace play. Um, it, you, may, you may start considering uh, much more aggressive routing decisions. Um, if we end up needing to get the item that's uh, on that green pendant, you could save a lot of time by getting that early. Because uh, there are a lot of items that getting early could save us a lot of time. Uh, in John's mind, John hasn't seen the hookshot yet. The hammer could be really huge to find on the green pendant. The... Uh, the mirror could be big N not necessarily uh it depends if something's in swamp but if the hammer is on that green pendant then that could save a lot of time but yeah i i wouldn't agree per se with the with a mafia play at this point yeah and we did get that shovel check it was just 20 bucks so i'm really i'm sending my thought ways to our runners Head to the most item dense area that you know of that you can get to right now. Yeah, I th I really think the hesitance to go to pod is just the lack of that mirror. It's I I feel like so there's a difference in in my experience between the racer mentality and and the non racer mentality. There are things that a racer of randomizer would would value a lot higher than somebody who's you know, just playing randomizer casually, just wants to finish the seed. Um, in a racer's mind, if you go to Palace of Darkness without the mirror, and it's pendant, you, you're just looking for item checks, and the mirror is available somewhere in the world, there's always a chance your opponent could get that mirror and save a buttload of time and pot over you. Even yes. if the item you need is in there. That is true, but with as many checks as they've done so far, I would take the risk of doing Hammerless Pod. Yeah, all that said, I would have gone to Pod already at this point. Um, it's it's a dense dungeon, there are five checks in there. Even without Mirror, it's not too bad, especially if you have the bow. Because then you can just sort of route it, make the play to do that bow lock side very last thing. Um, because at that point... Yeah. So, okay, the, the way the pod works is you, you've got that front area. If you've got a key, you can go through the front door, and that's great. If you don't have a key, uh, well, you have to go to the bow side. Um, but if you do have that key in the front and can open that front door, you route through the back of pod first. Then you can sort of drop down and take the warp that leads to the bow side anyway. It's, it's a little more awkward and a little... You have to get a little luck for it to work out really nicely for you but it's not too bad in the best case scenario. Yes. And uh, with them having green mail, uh, that make death warping pretty, pretty easy. Um, if they were to get too far in and need to go back up to the front. Yeah, I would say putting off pod this long is hopeful. That's that's the word I would use for both of these runners. Now, Getting too hopeful question. Can, can bite you. Here's a good question. At the first sight of, like, say, mirror or hammer, do you think one of them will nope out of it? Um, pod is green pendant. Uh, I, I was sort of misspeaking earlier when talking about Skullwoods. Skullwoods isn't green pendant. If it was green pendant, then defeating Mothula would make sense. Uh, pod for green pendant isn't bad. Um, if we see mirror and hammer in here, then boy, howdy, you, you can bet... Uh, you know, 
maybe Crimson one, because Crimson's routing has been pretty good. If John goes into pod and finds both of those items in there, I I would say it wouldn't be a terrible play to just go ahead and finish it, especially with Silvers being available, because uh, it's it's not too far to just mirror back to the to Sahasrila and check that green pendant. Uh, if it's not what you need, not uh, too bad, but uh, you, you're looking for ways to save time on John's side. Uh, after that Ice Palace dip, you, you're really looking for some time save. Chris, I'm doing kind of that routing that you're talking about with the getting the key versus not getting the key. He's got the key. Yeah, interesting. And... Interestingly, not going to the back first. So we're going to see here in a minute. This side is bow locked, unless there's a way to bypass it without the bow. You know, if, if you if you mishandle the game a little bit, um, it can help out. Um, but ordinarily, it, there's a red mimic in this room, and red enemies in this game are outside of the you know the horse head ones that you find in thieves town for some reason those are the only ones that aren't uniquely vulnerable to the bow and arrow so you need to beat all of the enemies to, to exit this room and you need the bow to do it um so this is referred to as the bow locked entrance uh, it leads to two chests and a ledge that you need the hammer to jump down if you don't have the hammer you can't can't jump down and this is kind of just a dead end and without the mirror you can't easily mirror back out so it's a it's a little awkward to route this first, but probably uh, having only seen one key in that front, uh, they want to pick up the two keys so that they can do the back all in one go. Because then you're hoping that you know you have enough to maybe check the harmless hellway um, if it turns out that that's an item. Yes, and Chris and Dylan, um, as we were talking about taking that death warp, um, quickly going back to the front of pod to go to the back honestly in, in randomizer pod is one of my favorite dungeons it's just so intricate so many different ways that you can route it both with and without glitches um it's and it's it's such a cerebral dungeon because because it's you can do it fast and you can do it really slow um and it's and a lot of it is based on reacting to how well you know the key logic and and how well you react to what you find uh, John about to find his hookshot and start start feeling antsy in his pantsy. Because um, that's been available for a long time here. And, and CJ pointing out in chat, um, if you want to take a death warp, those spikes do one heart of damage each. So they do more damage to you. Yeah, regardless of, of which uh, armor you've got, notably. So if, if you've got... Um, if, say you're coming into Eastern Palace, the seed's been really nice to you, you have red mail already. Uh, and you have a decent number of hearts, but it would still be faster to death warp than walk all the way back somehow. Um, using those spikes is, is the way to go, because uh, as environmental hazards, they don't, uh, they don't, they don't care about your defense level. Aw, oh, dead rock just, uh, just in the way. And the harmless Hellway taking us to um, maybe get that green pain that cost we got hammer. Yeah, see, uh, at this point, uh, having checked what Crimson's checked, gone up both dark and light side, right side Death Mountain. Because um, that's, for for all we'd like to see hammer and mirror first before going up there, it's, it's a good call because there's a lot, a lot of checks up there available right now after finding that hook shot. Um, chances are pretty decent that one of those two is even going to be there. Um, but um, having checked all that and still coming up empty, you're you're looking pretty good at uh, you know pretty good chances of hammer in in Palace of Darkness at this point, just because it's the only place with a lot of checks that's left accessible. And Lumaga, you're you're almost like not wrong that pendant pod is to play majority of the time. Yeah, and that, that goes back to the interesting, you know, routing options in this dungeon. It's 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 a very interesting dungeon. I, I love it so much, I can't overstate it enough, because there's so many items you need to full clear it. But when you see that it's a pendant, you're not looking for the full clear, you're looking for check access. And so many different combinations of items give you check access. Uh, given the right key logic, you can do a lot in Palace of Darkness with just the lamp. And, 
and and given that those options are available we're gonna see crimson full clear it you know at this point you found the hammer you can full clear it why the hell not you know it's, it's the green pendant it's worth another two checks both the boss and uh the green pendant itself um yes but given that there are so many checks that are available that aren't strictly behind items it's not unreasonable for the algorithm to put these items in a in the, this pendant dungeon yes now did we get a count on the items that we've actually gotten so far in here Did we find all five already, or do we have one more to go? I mean, whether we have or not, um, yeah, so Vortex says there's an item on Helma. So since there is, that makes the uh, decision to full clear it really makes sense. Um, but to go back to that uh, item routing, to contrast Palace of Darkness with something like Swamp Palace. Swamp Palace has a lot of requirements as well. Um, not, it has more than, than Palace of Darkness does. Uh, it requires flippers, hookshot, and mirror. And and the hammer. Um, however, each of those items is a hard lock at the point at which they are required. Hookshot is the weakest one, but... If, if you go down Swamp Palace without Hookshot, you can't full clear the dungeon, and you're locked out of three potentially... You're locked out of four check locations, really. Um, and there are three chests back there plus the boss. With Pod, if you go into Pod without the hammer, there's really only one check you're guaranteed to not have access to, and that's the boss check here. If you go into Pod without the arrows, there's only one check you're guaranteed to not have access to, and that's the boss check. Logically, yes. The, for the era, the era, and, and that specifically is why Pendant Pod is never an uncomfortable dive, because there's very little you need to potentially get the item you're looking for out of it, and, th and that's something that's really important to keep in mind, because if you put it off for too long just because it's a pendant, you could really be hurting yourself. And we do see Chris I'm going up the mountain. My guess heading towards Tower of Hera. Or or oh, yeah. maybe mountain at this point, uh that is the fastest flute point. Uh you're you spawn closest to the exit, so it's not uncommon. It's 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 pretty quick to menu to that spot, and it saves time over the time it takes to travel to the door of Link's house. Um so yeah, once you see that save and quit spot opened up, it's really common to see that as the as the flute spot of choice. Yeah, I'm just surprised that Crimson didn't go ahead and beat Tower of Hair. Uh, I'm not. Um, given that we're going to have to go back up the mountain at some point anyway for um, uh, Turtle Rock, we could. It, it is nice to be able to do, again, minimize your death mountain climbs. Going up right now would just be for Tower of Hera and you'd have to go the long way around. You can't go straight up mirror and then get to Tower of Hera the normal way. You have to go around the right side, climb up the mountain, hammer the pegs down, and then go over. It's a slightly lengthier climb and, and you don't really get much out of it. Also, there's there's always... You really like to have Hera be the last dungeon you do. If, if you, we can get everything we need for go mode before going up and having t uh, Turtle Rock and Tower of Hera be our last two dungeons, oh, that, that would just feel nice. Um, just, uh, uh, you get to Turtle Rock, walk over to the Tower of Hera, mirror, clear Tower of Hera, walk out, take the portal, right up uh, right up Ganon's Tower. It's uh, <laughs> You rarely get the opportunity to do that. Uh, okay. You, you convinced me. Uh, I'm just talking up. Now, interesting that John is going to Meyer, which I'll... John is clinging to hope that his brain, one of these plays, will be big. One of these plays will be the big brain play. And that's another thing that can be sort of hard to... Uh, once you make a mistake like that early Ice Palace dive, which I'm convinced it was a complete mistake, 
uh, may maybe doing a little bit too much practice and getting hammered too many times. Thought he had it in hand. And gets all the way to the bottom of samaria -less Iced Palace, only to realize he doesn't have it. You don't even feel safe making safe plays anymore. Because you know your opponent's likely doing the same thing. You've got to gain time somehow. And that, and that can lead you to make some really questionable decisions. We have kind of some. Uh, they, this is his fourth. Yeah, in John's defense, that bomb jump that he had was extraordinarily clean. Uh, first try bomb jump isn't necessarily rare, but uh, I would say that you know fifth plus try bomb jump is uh, not not really any rarer. It's 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 a uh, this this is a crimson really really demonstrating this is a this is a tricky trick. Your positioning has to be yes. just right. Yeah, and I will admit, I have just learned that. <laughs> uh, trying to get it consistent. Yeah, that, that is one of the reasons that I uh, still insist on doing uh, doing Ice Palace the, the normal way. Just I just don't like setting up for tricks like that. Um, if I were trying to save time, it, you, you just learn how to do it. It's not a huge deal, but uh, it, it is finicky to set up for some of those tricks, and... Uh, and Crimson really showing why is you've really got to be precise with a lot of these tricks. And that's why everybody loves Icebreaker so much because it's a uh, it's a lot less precise than that. And um, very technically could. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, with Swamp being a pendant dungeon. Uh, that that's one of the things that uh now at, at this point crimson having done that full pod dip um you kind of hope you don't see the mirror because if, if you see the mirror that opens up swamp palace with with six checks in there you you don't want to be thinking okay do do i go down into swamp for those checks because it's not front loaded it, it's pretty back loaded a lot of the you know you got four checks in the back side of swamp palace that's why people skip left side swamp because it just lets you get to all of those checks that much sooner. But if if you really can, you really hope you don't have to go down there at all. And if you never see mirror, you don't even have to worry about it. But uh, I'm just going going through like at what autos we have left to get. Yeah, technically we we may not need mirror, if I'm correct. Um, what we absolutely know we need for go mode, hammer, Samaria. We right. Uh, I was I was looking at John's tracker at the time. So really, Samaria is tentative go mode. Um, there are a couple more things we could need. We have both the medallions. We could need boots. And uh, if we don't, we need either book or mirror. Uh, because we do need to get to Desert Palace. And without either of those items, either one at this point would give us uh, entry to Desert Palace. Did John go, not go far enough? Yeah, Meyer not paying off for John. Though Crimson does take a costly death to Cold Stare. Uh, just I, about I to feel, drink that blue I know, it's like I, I feel that the X button being hit right as soon as, or that, yeah, that Y button being hit right as soon as. Yeah, with the Master Sword, that can be a. Again, this goes sort of back to that racer mentality thing. Um, I personally would have very little trouble completing that cold stare fight with just the master sword, but it's very, very slow to do it safely. Um, and so you want to be using that fire rod. You want to be getting the most out of all of your time in that battle as possible. 
because there's the possibility that if your opponent's more comfortable, they're going to gain a lot of time on you over that. Uh, we saw that in a race that I uh, commentated last week. I, I believe that was last week, and it feels like an eternity ago now, but um, where a, a 15, I think, minute time deficit was made up for in the final boss fight, just uh, from different equipment. Um, so it, it can be swingy sometimes if you take a lot of time on some of these harder boss fights or harder strategies just playing it safe. And the temptation is very strong to be unsafe and uh, trust that you can just make it. Crimson, very nice uh, bomb strategy for those skeletons. I, I kick myself every day for not learning any of those. I'm, I'm just I'm just too lazy. Yeah, I get that. I try. And I still... But oh, Chris. I mean, you gotta. Yeah, I mean, Ice Palace is is full clearable at this point. Um. With this many bombs, I would not go for the bomb jump again. If you die again, you gotta... Well, I haven't been paying attention to the prize packs. Uh, yeah, now he's... Is he gonna save and quit? Okay, no. He, I think the sensible play here is to just do it the normal way. Suck it up. The pro the problem with this being that uh, we could end up with some Aria Locked Ice Palace. It could be logically behind it. I haven't been paying attention to the key logic. Uh, maybe, maybe Crimson has, and that's why he's saving and quitting. Or maybe he just doesn't understand how the dungeon works if you don't if you don't cheat. Okay, uh, grumpy old man mode off. Yeah, see, I started playing before Icebreaker, and so I'm kind of used to the normal route. Yeah, I, just, I just played too much, uh, played too much casually, where I didn't I didn't really care how fast it was. You know, if you got to do Ice Palace, you got to do Ice Palace, man. Just just play by the rules. But uh, yeah. And that can that can be something that's to note when learning these glitches. Um, you know, Icebreaker is fantastic, uh, but if you use it as a crutch, it can bite you because uh, you're not guaranteed to get Samaria before for entering entering Ice Palace. So, uh, if you really want to do your due diligence, you learn how to do it both ways. So I'm just gonna throw this out there, and chat may love or hate me for this. Can of Samaria could true we do have uh we would need to see mirror first but yes that is possible uh crimson here with a very comfortable lead at this point john having taken a lot of gambles uh, probably to make up for that ice palace play and they're not paying off he's about to find that hammer so uh, we may see that ice palace clear on john's side And interesting to note, Crimson, having dipped out of Ice Palace, not not deciding not to further commit to it, that play makes a lot of sense, especially you know in the moment. If if you're struggling with something, um, dedicating more time to it is often not a not a really good solution. Um, you may as well do something else, and uh, it could pay off. Come back when it's easier for you. Um, but if you devote more time to it say you know just keep trying for that bomb jump you can you can get suckered into wasting all of your time there and that's that's never any fun yeah i i completely get that i've um in my earlier days of doing renda i did tunnel vision into um that kind of thing and racer mentality has kicked in and i think that's that's important to note that hey if you're if you're low on equipment if you don't have the right loadout just go ahead uh leave come back wait till you power up a little bit and make sure that you can properly uh beat the dungeon yeah. now that's also gambling that your opponent is of the same of the same months right and i mean you sort of have to consider what your opponent could do but you can't rely on it too much because there's no telling what your opponent has done in, in this case crimson polish would probably not in a million years have guessed that uh, john did a full dip of 
Ice Palace without the hammer. Um, so he, he has no way of knowing uh, how much of an advantage he really has in this race. So you start, you and Ice Palace is the most painful dungeon. If you, especially if you don't have the Cane of Samaria, to have to bang your head against. Um, so before you even start, I'd say it makes a lot of sense to to go up and just clear this pendant dungeon. Yeah, it's only a few checks, but it's measurable progress. Yes, and it looks like Cramson didn't know he could just fire an eye shot or fire rock shot south to uh, hit that crystal switch. Um, it's probably ooh, and Terrace are. Yeah, that's a. Uh... I mentioned earlier we maybe didn't want to see the mirror. Crimson is going to be happy to see that mirror because that's more places now that that he could see that cane of Samaria, which is going to make a redip of Ice Palace a lot. It's going to feel a lot better, um, rather than having to come back and still have to do it the longer way. That's exactly what you want would want to see if you abandon Ice Palace like that. Okay, if if I'm leaving Ice Palace. Ideally, when you come back, you want to have that cane because that minimizes the the time that you're sack. Though now, uh, now we could have uh, pedestal Samaria. It is now completely on the. I'm not doing an evil laugh or anything right now for for uh, Samaria possibly being on the. Now, it'll be interesting to see if Crimson decides to go... What Crimson decides to use this mirror for. Um, there are three overworld mirror checks uh, that are available. Well, four if you count the floating island, which uh, I would imagine none of our runners really want to go and grab. Not, not very uh, worthwhile. But uh, there's Graveyard Ledge uh, north of the castle, Cape 45 south of the grove, and checkerboard cave uh, in the mire area. Now that's three items. Uh, with the book that opens up the Bombos tablet, uh, but that's that's about it for overworld checks you can do with the mirror. We have Chris and going to do I, Spike. I would say Swamp is the play. Swamp's got six items down there. You can full clear it, and it's a pendant dungeon, so it can cover your ass if it becomes a ped seed later. Because we're still waiting on that cane. Um, it is the only item we know we're waiting on now that we have desert access. So desert palace play would make a lot of sense too. Yeah, I was going to say... Um, desert into after checkerboard, out, then. and then swamp would be my next play. Maybe dip into mire because Crimson hasn't done that yet. John, unfortunately, digging the hole ever deep. But if it is if it is a pet seed, then John at least has one pendant. If it's not a pet seed, this is a waste of John's time. If it is a pet seed, eh, I mean, even so, this I, I would say a pet seed does not still doesn't. Fit. Yeah, Crimson, Crimson. I think debating between the Swamp or uh, Desert Palace play. I think we're seeing the Desert yeah. Palace play. This is the play that I would make because you... The, sure, Desert Palace is only two checks. But if you do see the Cane of Samaria, it's perfect to route that straight on into Mire. Um, and if it's not, you still got a pen, uh, Crystal Dungeon clear. Yeah, I was going to say, that would be a play I would make as well. Just because you have Desert... And since Christmas hasn't done it yet, you can also ride in Meyer, hope for it in there, which you know that it didn't avail too much. Yeah, notable that uh, until John decides to go up to that Tower of Hera, John can't even get into Desert. So if we see something important in here, that's really, really bad luck for John. If the Kingdom of Samaria is in Desert Palace, I think we can get our GGs in chat almost immediately. Because, uh,. Because that's a because that plays right into Crimson's hands. Crimson's right here. It would be perfect. It would be the 
Here we go. Now, I don't recall if we saw Crimson actually turn in the green pin. I was just getting ready to say that. I don't think either. I don't think we saw that green pin it turn in. Sen in chat mentioning that a pizza conversation happened, and I am becoming jealous. All right, so we could possibly be boot slopped. Actually, right, so we, we will uh, need the boots to get to the the right side of desert and we are boot locked so um... so now we are looking for two items which makes swamp a little more uh, a little more attractive uh since we so we do need to find two items that makes a pendant dungeon dive a, a little uh a, 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 less risky um swamp is not the worst dive in any scenario but if you're only looking for one item, you can lose a lot of time to say a Swamp Palace dive if it ends up, oh, you know, Samaria was on Graveyard Ledge the whole time because you could have just checked that first. And Green Pin had just given us some some arrows. So, um, Sahash, Sahashula not being very con with that gift to us. For re uh, it looks like John may be heading back into Ice Palace. I can't see any other reason to flute to this spot. Also, uh, another reason to flute to this spot, and then uh, shortly thereafter equip the fire rod and then swim to the island. I imagine we're seeing an ice palace redip here. Taking that portal, uh, this literally doesn't lead anywhere else. Okay, yes, yeah, so we, we do see. We do see the ice palace redip. It is and we have Chris getting his. Mm, if John had been thinking ahead, he may, maybe would have grabbed that. But uh, John had been thinking ahead, he maybe would have decided, I'm not going to waste the time. Did John actually see what was... Uh, maybe not. I don't recall who we saw that, that from. That That's something that's uh, interesting to, when watching these races side by side. Is It's, it's really easy to forget who has what information. Uh, I remember there was a race uh, a while back where we had a one runner had information on something important on bumper cave ledge and the other runner had information via the book of mudora that uh, the cape was on the ether tablet but they didn't know they needed the cape the other runner knew they needed the cape but didn't know where it was and it, it was it's very interesting but a little hard to keep track of at times so uh, we are in the same dungeon not the same Runners neck and neck in Ice Palace. Just looking at their loadouts is almost similar now. So we could, other than the uh, Tower of Hair, we have converse a little bit, maybe. Yeah, the uh, the mirror's big. Uh, d depending on uh, if we find the. Uh... Because the problem is we still don't have any knowledge on where the Cane of Samaria is. So, so having that mirror is a huge lead for Crimson. Because that gives a lot of item availability, whereas John doesn't even know where the mirror is, is going to have to venture all the way up a whole death mountain climb to to get that. And with a deficit like John is hoping to make up, you don't go up death mountain willy-nilly. So it's uh, I would say that mirror is extremely significant. Yes. And chat is making me hungry right now. The only way that this could end up really working out in John's favor, I don't recall if we've seen all three items in here, uh, but if we haven't, and the, the Cane of Samari is on Cold Stair. That's about what would help out here. Yeah, John okay, going up here. Saying, to yeah, chat saying that Last Palace is 33. No yeah, it number. might not be in John's case because John hasn't checked either of these two chests because they are hammer locked, which he uh, notably didn't have, unfortunately. So, yeah, there's one of the checks. So, uh, I, if John was making this dive, probably uh, hoping that he could maybe still find the cane in here. Yeah, we. so, yeah, two of the checks. John had only, only had one out of three. Crimson already had three out of three, so... Uh, this was uh, very disappointing for John.
So, uh, round two for Crimson. Now having that tempered sword, I kind kind of missed where that got uh that got picked up. Tempered was probably oh, in desert. No. no, it was the boss item from uh, Troll. Ah, uh, yeah. So that's uh that makes short work of uh, Cold Stair here. Whereas John, again, uh, you know that Tower of Hera is is really making a difference here, giving Crimson the mirror and the tempered sword. Yeah, John's still at a, a pretty significant deficit. If John can stick this fight, though, um, it's it's some small comfort, some cold comfort, if you'll pardon the pun. Maybe it would chill on that a little bit. Yeah, puns aside, I mean, it, it is... G getting concrete progress in a situation like John is in can be... Uh, it can be what it takes to get your mentality back in the game because that's the some of the it's it's one of the most underrated uh difficulties when doing a race like this um if your mentality starts to crumble it can be it can be very difficult to get back in the game um i know a couple of of runs i've had where i've you know all okay you know all i've got to do i finally have enough to go mode turtle rock just got to go clear it and uh, do the Gans Tower Climb and finish it out. Shouldn't be that hard. I'm kitted out well enough. And and then I, I just start failing on Trinex. And it's like, I know I'm a good enough player to beat Trinex every time. Even with as little as, you know, Master Sword and Hammer. I've I've had very good Trinex Hammer fights. But but if, if you're feeling like you're behind and your head's not in the game, you can't hold it together for some of those crucial moments. And it's, it's hard to shake off sometimes. Yeah, Rando Tilt. R racing rando tilt is a thing and i'm hoping that that's not what john's feeling right now crimson making that uh swamp palace play i agree with it um the only way it can really bite him is if it's we're looking at a graveyard ledge or uh k45 because because that mirror is looking hard like it's it's our it's our intended progression here Ooh, Crimson getting body. Yeah, and and with what Crimson still has available, it you you really can't not go into into a Swamp Palace here. Um, especially having found that mirror, if you find nothing in Swamp Palace, you go to Skull Woods, defeat that boss, mirror, blind pulp head. It 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 really doesn't route out any better than this. Yeah, I have to agree with you there. Um I think Chris was going to make short work uh, getting through here just because he does have that uh, tipper sword. That said, I would imagine we see a left side swamp skip. Um, maybe, maybe Crimson is feeling a little uh, a little behind after the, the, the Ice Palace troubles earlier on, uh, which you could decide to make a safe play, especially in Pendant Swamp Palace, of just doing left side swamp first because you know a redip for something like that is painful if you feel like you're already behind but it's it's kind of six to one half dozen of the other i think yeah. skipping left side is is generally a better play you get to those dense back checks first um and it's not nearly as much of a time loss to have to come back for left side swamp than it is a time save to be able to skip them it kind of depends on what you see before that point if you if you see some dungeon items, then you know there's guaranteed to be something over there. It's just a matter of whether or not you need it. Yeah, especially since you know our runners don't have Candace and Maria and can just do uh, diver down left side. Yeah, I don't recall. Do have either of our runners expressed uh, comfort with the bomb setup for diver down? Um, I do see that. Um, yeah. I but their interviews put up here. That it looks like a Crim Crimson yeah. has is more comfortable with Samaria, which is un not unusual. And bombs, it, it can be done. Um, John, and we see Crimson actually doing the bomb setup. Yeah, I I mean I imagine so. Especially if you decide to not skip it, y you don't. 
not do the bomb setup if if you uh, know how it's done. Yeah, something. I would say skipping left side swamp if you know there's going to be some items over there isn't a great play in this moment, especially with the knowledge crimson has, knowing that we are two items away from go mode. We need to find those boots first. If you were looking for just one item, it would be a better play to skip it because... You know, you don't run the risk of, oh, okay, cool, if you find the Cane of Samaria in the back of uh, Swamp Palace. S say, suppose John's going down there after finding the Mirror in Hera, decides to go straight for Swamp. And if and if the Cane of Samaria is in the back, John would be thinking, great, I'm in go mode. And then eventually run into desert and find like, shoot, I need the boots. And maybe left those in left side Swamp. That's a situation you don't want to be in. So uh, that would be the where you'd want to uh, do left side swamp. Yeah, Chris, I'm unfortunately having the, to get out of there just because he's, he I guess he's feeling the pressure of the Tom not being on the side or not knowing that Tom is on the side right now and uh, getting out of there and having to leave so he can reset that room. Yeah, um, it, especially if you're not super comfortable with that bomb setup that's one of the things with the tricks um is they're nice they're they're nice time savers but if unless you can do them super consistently you can you can end up wasting a deceptive amount of time just uh you know um yeah so yeah I, is crimson gonna set up to do it again or uh no crimson's going here picking up the pot this way i see yeah That's another thing, too. If you uh, do left side swamp, you can't uh, always take this little shortcut because you've already used the key to get into that top room. Ordinarily, in vanilla logic, you need to grab the key under that pot to get into this room in the first place. There's no other way to open that locked door. And so this is that routing to grab that key is only possible if you haven't already skipped left side swamp. John finishing off Moldorm is going to pick up that Tower of Hera crystal and see that mirror. So we're going to see what he does with that information in short order. Let's see if I'm going to go ahead and immediately head the swamp. Which hasn't been very profitable right now. Yeah, we're, we're going to see if, uh, if Crimson is going to regret not skipping left side swamp. He's going left side. Right, so so he's doing it. If he finds nothing here, he's like, oh, shoot, I should have skipped it. And John making the sensible spike cave. There are the so already paying off left side. Okay, so Crimson doesn't have to worry about that. Oh, and a red item. Not what we're looking for, but a step in the right direction. Can we say red? Yeah, interestingly enough, the Cane of Samaria is also the only item we have left for red percent. Uh, unless, like some, you choose to include the second shield upgrade. In which case, we need to find that. As oh, well as the red boomerang. Important, importantly, the red boomerang. The less stylish of the two. Red. That's true. Uh, yeah, I was, I was making all that up. I apologize. I prefer red percent anyway, but... I'm a blue percent kind of guy. Okay, so John is making the desert play, so it won't fall into the trap of perhaps if we... Again, exactly what I was talking about. We don't know if the King of Samari is back here. If it is, and uh, you decided to skip left side swamp, <laughs> shooty McNuggets, the boots were over there. So uh, luckily, John is going to get that Desert Palace information, find out that those boots are required, and know that he's looking for them. Hey, we're one step closer to Rip. We do find that big key. And we got Red Mellis. Well, 
and Crimson falling into the trap of, hey, I got boots late. I'm yeah, that's it's easy to forget that you uh, actually have them at this point. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd like to, again, mention that. So Crimson found that big key. If uh, at this point, what you do is you is you go to the, and you hope that uh, depending on item count, because I haven't been paying close attention, having to split my attention between these two streams, you uh, hope that uh, there's a dungeon item in that chest and you don't need to grab it. Yeah. And uh... if we've seen both of the dungeon items already, then, uh, yeah, you might want to walk back for the big chest given that you're only one item away from go mode at this point, because it's it's a little bit of a time loss to have to dive back down to go get it. That said, if you do still need to get an item from that big chest and you still need that cane, you go back in right away. Otherwise, you have to, you know, reset the water for the beginning and you waste even more time on the on the retread if it becomes necessary. Yeah, I was going to say, with it being this far back, it's probably better just go ahead and beat Argus and uh, Crimson going for the double temper sword spin rather than uh, the single silver arrow and uh, grabbing that second pendant so since we haven't seen the book we don't know what's on that pedestal but uh, Crimson is well set up to check it out alright so if I'm Crimson do I A go to desert or B go to sw our skull woods and mirror well if you're crimson you're going back in for that big chest right now um we see john going over to k45 i don't think we saw this from crimson if uh if chat could correct me that would, that would be great um but uh if this is samaria then john made a big uh some big progress here and of course a bit after checking big Uh, those bombs are not going to help John out too much. But yeah, if I were Crimson here, I would go to Desert. Um, I wouldn't... Uh, it wouldn't really make much sense to do anything else. Um, you're set up for the probably the most convenient pedestal check possible. Because uh, you can roll the walk to the pedestal and the final pendant all into the same thing you've gotten both of the items out of the dungeon so it's really just one check but you can save a lot of time by uh, hoping you don't have to do it so and when it's one check like that that's ideal hey hey we are in go mode yeah for crimson crimson did yeah. on that red cane it's, uh, it's, um, it's pretty pretty big news for for crimson uh Pendant Swamp paying off a, a little bit more than the Pendant Pod did. Uh, yeah, this is this is gonna this is gonna be game. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't think there's a equipment loadout in the world that could save time over enough time over Tempered Sword Silvers. Uh, so it, <laughs> Crimson would have to make some egregious errors for John to close this gap. And John is checking all the overworld locations first before going into Swamp Ant. Looks like he's heading down. Yeah, checking those overworld locations, again, can make sense. At this point, everything John does has to be a gamble. If you make the safe plays um, and they work out for you, you're not you're still not gaining time in the in the best case scenario, really. Because uh, you're sort of gambling on the fact that your opponent who most likely didn't make the same errors that you made is going to be making risky plays for much less reason. So it's one of those things where it's like, okay, well, if it's, if it's behind the sensible play, I've already lost anyway. So, so really the, the biggest issue here is going to be the fact that, you know, John's going to have to do everything after all, you know, and has just wasted that time. It didn't end up paying off. And we have Chris going into fight Lamos. I wonder if, if he'll get those silvers out and just one shot each head. 
each uh yeah, with uh, half magic, might go for the fire rod strats. Sometimes a little bit easier. Now we're going to see those silvers. Um, it kind of depends how uh, comfortable you are with it. Looks like crimson is more than comfortable enough. Just slot. Uh, that misses one cycle, but uh, healing two in one cycle is, is certainly fast enough that uh, hey, you might consider, you know, okay, you know, I'll, I'll play it safe. Just go with the tempered sword spins if you're not too confident in your aim. Um, but yeah, at, at this point, it, Crimson may not know it yet, but, uh, he's, he's got this all done and dusted. Yeah, I hope he doesn't know it or else we have to invalidate. I mean, you might have reason to suspect it given, uh, how convenient some of these plays have been, but with that, you know, dying in Ice Palace and having to take that, you know, all that costly time in there. Uh, you're definitely gonna bet that you're behind. I mean, just thinking about the the plays that have been made by both these runners, I could feel like either one of these runners could. Yeah. So chat pointing out, uh, John has Meyer big already. Uh, there's a pretty big uh, moment of truth coming up. Uh, does John make the gamble of skipping left side swamp? Um. If John doesn't and gets a good diver down, that's some time gained. Um, so, uh, again, if John plays really well and Crimson makes a couple mistakes, this this gap could close. But uh, it's 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 dicey. Uh, that's what I'll say. This will like John is going. Yeah, and again, knowing that we need two items, this is the play to make. You you don't risk saving this time when you know you're you've got a deficit to make up and you're two items behind. And if John doesn't have to re-dip the, uh, the Swamp Palace big chest, um, that could be another little time save. Go moding Meyer could catch up. Um, it, it would be it would be a little more interesting if we were both still at Master Sword, because that would uh, me ha likely mean a Hammer Trinex, which again is another place for execution to make a big difference. But with tempered sword, it's it's uh, you sort of expect most most runners, especially at this stage in the tournament, to be sort of on equal footing on that boss. Do you remember where Bicky was in in here? I don't remember where the Meyer Big Key was. No. Yeah, so John not doing Diver Down, still saving time over Crimson, who tried Diver Down and then still ended up not doing Diver Down. Boots. John breathing a sigh of relief that left side swamp, again, wasn't a waste of time. That's something you always worry when you decide to not take the gamble of skipping it is, should I have? But uh, yes. luckily neither runner needing to... And Chris, I'm getting that big key heading to the back. Yeah, with those silvers, Vitreus is going to be pretty pretty quick. Now, I'm curious, did the Crimson set up for spooky action? I know um, they said that they're trying to learn it. I would doubt it, given the, uh, the routing that they basically took, because Crimson went into desert. Uh, you have to set up spooky action when you first enter the Meyer area from that from that ledge and that and that portal up there. Uh, so basically, ideally, you want to you have to avoid doing certain things before you reach uh, this room that Crimson is in right now. Um, I believe I mean, it might be the next room. Actually, it's the next room. You have to want to hit the switch in here because um, there's a switch in the room up to the north. 
and you have to avoid doing certain things in the meantime. So the less you do between the time you enter Mire and the time you get to this room, the better. With an entire dungeon in between, I would imagine that uh, setting up for spooky action is not going to really be a great, great option. John, considering John decides to go back up, it looks like. Uh, it changes his mind? It changes his mind. The jellyfish scared him away, it looks like. Thirty silver arrows. Maybe silver opting arrow. to check this. Uh, yeah, and, and then this deed, you decide to continue on for the boss. Hope that that's the. Because uh... again, that's that's time loss that John really doesn't want to risk. It's like you know you've got to save time somewhere, but you know you can't afford to lose anymore. So it, it makes some of these plays really hard to, really hard to decide. And which one the right one is depends on knowledge that you don't have. Like, I mean, it, it, it's going to hurt John to not have done that. Uh, he, he's not going to have gained that time, but at, this, at the same time, you can't really fault him for not doing it. So, you know, what, what if what if you go back and it's and it's not what you need? And you what you needed was further in and your opponent didn't go back, you know, then you're losing time. It relies on so many unknowns. And and when you've made some execution errors or questionable routing decisions like these runners have, um, he, you don't know what to think anymore, especially at, as we're approaching the two-hour mark. Two hours and heading up to T-Rock. So we're going to want to keep an eye on Crimson. Any, any mistake here? Is, is very good news for John because John is going to get to go mode Misery Mire here in just a second. Well, after, uh, unless, unless they just, yeah, they're going to go back in. That's, <laughs> if he uh, didn't go back in, I would, uh, uh, I would have, almost, have words with him in the interview. I almost screamed at my, at my screen if he decides to. Yeah, there, there are some areas where uh, some things could happen, but with red mail, we've got, you know, safeties on safeties here. Um, and we do have a bug net if they need to grab. And plenty of those available in Turtle Rock. However, we don't have the powder, so uh, actually uh, that scratch that from the wreck. <laughs> but we do have... Uh, several. Yeah, I'm sure we're gonna we're gonna hope we don't have to see them. Uh, that's another area where some time could be made up in that GT Big Key hunt. Uh, it's, it's like an Easter egg hunt, but there's only one Easter egg, and uh, one of them is in Thailand. That's where you want to see it. That's where I always want to see it, and I always want to see it not at the end but at the beginning of their search. That would be a play that could be on both of these runners' minds, honestly, with the with the errors that they've made, because uh, that's a great way to make up time if your opponent is ahead of you. Um, it, it's it's one of the reasons I love that big, big key hunt, because it makes a lot of sense to check tile room last, because it it's a long time before you can check that one chest. It's, it makes a lot of sense to skip it, because it's only one out of 22. But if you make that chest last, it, it ends up, you know, it, it, if you skip it, you end up making it the last chest you check. But it could be the first you check. It's so readily available that if you make the gamble on the big key being in there and do it right away, you're almost guaranteed to save an entire Ganesaur basement's worth of time over your opponent, which is significant, to say the least. It doesn't happen often. Yes, it's a one in twenty-two shot. That is, 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 it's rarely a sensible play. You only make it if if you've got no other chance of making up the amount of time that you've lost elsewhere. I also I love selling people on tile room. It, it is very easy to forget how readily available it is. Uh, sometimes it can even be a, a sort of, you know, you you don't check it right away, but you know. 
if if you've made a mistake and you and you want to make up some time, you know, route it route it into Dark Magician. You know, you go right side or left side for the uh, Stalfos room, and then on your way over to right side, maybe consider checking Tile Room. Like, oh, if if it's if it's not in here, then I've already lost anyway. But if it is in here, then I have a really good chance. You sort of have to know you're behind to, to even go for it, but it, it's something to keep in mind in the very, very back of your mind. All right, something else to keep in mind right now, Cransom did get the big key into rock and he's not going to steal the key from the pokey. He has no keys right now. So I wonder if this, is he just going to gamble finally a is very interesting with these gambles because he does save a lot of time by by skipping mimic cave which he doesn't really need to look at he, he didn't go steal the key from the pokey so he basically he needs to see a key in this next crystal roller room um it, it if it works out it's a big time save oh he forgot he didn't have one a lot of a lot of forgetting going on here um and that's something we'll see. Um, like, like at this point in the tournament, runners have you know m very meaningful records. At this point, uh, you see, you won't see this type of error as much from the runners who have zero or one losses under their belt. But if both of these runners having uh, two and three, uh, three losses, th that's something that's going to be part of the reason why is these intermittent execution errors that are going to cost them the edge. under this yeah electing to go for that big chest first because that's going to be the second uh second worst uh second least worst option basically yeah because you're going to have to backtrack through two tunnels yeah, it, to get... it would be safe it would be guaranteed to go get that key um this is still a little bit of a gamble but yeah you see the key in there now we can proceed could still get unlucky uh, well, no. At this point, he, he really, he really, well, he could. If there's if there's nothing on on uh, Laser Bridge, I believe he could need to go back for those keys. We have some little chat verify that for us, but I'm pretty, uh, I'm thinking you need to find havoc. Yeah, uh, there's one more key required to enter to get to the boss arena, and I'm. It, I'm fairly certain that it's possible for that one key to uh, be on uh, in that big key chest rather than on Laser Bridge, which is where uh, Crimson is hoping it is. It's it's a good gamble to bet that it's going to be on Laser Bridge. It's the safe play to go check that, or steal the key, rather. Um, if you steal that key, then you have the option of skipping the big chest, because um, that could be a key that you need. Um, but if big chest isn't a key, then uh, you can save the time that you would have spent go going and grabbing it. Yeah, this is this is not going to be a very uh, comfortable race for, for either of our runners here. Yeah, Crimson deciding to take that uh, that safety exit. This, this is exactly what I was talking about earlier. You get to this point, you've made some mistakes. You're thinking, okay, I've got to oh, play fast. Yeah. I've got to play fast. I've got Tempered Sword. Maybe I just go for Trinex. Don't take the extra time to take this safety. We don't have a key. He has to completely... Oh, yeah, that's... Uh... That's probably why he went and took it. Because, uh, actually... Does he have the option? He doesn't have the option, really, of using that mirror, does he? To go back to that entrance? Uh, it would be so far. I... I... I don't remember uh, how the doors slam closed behind you in this dungeon quite. The key is not in the big chest. He can steal the key from the uh, room that leads to the lava chest, uh, but he, he needs one of those two keys. There are two keys up there, and uh, he needs one of them. Which is sort of why, if, you're, if, if you've seen a big key, it's usually sensible to go and steal that key. Um, because the, the worst, uh, if you've seen the big key, so, so the way that Turtle Rock works here, right, is 
if the big key chest there in the middle of that room has the big key in it, it can lead to a key. If you've seen the big key already, then spending the key to open this door to get to it, um, in the worst case scenario, is just going to lead you to a key because the key logic has to work out. It has to assume that you waste your keys. Uh, interesting that he goes and opens it. Probably not familiar with the key logic of this dungeon. Uh, mm, 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 Crimson, this is not faster, unfortunately. But again, yeah, this is I, this mentor tournament is meant to introduce new runners to the game and help them help them improve. And and this is this is a hallmark of of a newer runner, um, not knowing by heart which routes through some of these dungeons are quicker. It, it would have been quicker for Crimson to backtrack even after making the mistake of going and opening that. And can, we could probably say that this is nerves. And this is exactly the sort of thing that John needs. Uh, John's mistake was so early on and so catastrophic. At this point, it may even be easier for John to be keeping a level head. John may be thinking, I'm out of this race entirely. Let's just buckle down, do a good job, avoid the DNC. You know, void that did not finish the race. Just make sure I put something up, get the practice in. It's a learning experience. I've he's he's already learned a lot. Make sure you have hammer before you go down into Ice Palace. Um, as Crimson's, all of his errors are sort of coming on the back end of the run, which is really scary. Hey, real quick, let's let's do give a shout out to our runners. Um, just having to navigate through this seed right now. Yeah, this, this hasn't been a friendly seed. We've seen worse in this tournament, but. You know, a lot of the time you, you you start a race, you're hoping for a friendly seed. And if if the seed is not friendly, then uh Yeah, so sometimes it's it's hard to keep that mental up and it's we, we see it biting crimson and uh it's just props to both of these runners for for sticking with it. Um you know, making it through. Neither of them falling victim to that juicy, juicy pedestal play. It was very enticing. Yeah, it was enticing, but sort of before we went through Swamp Palace and found everything we needed in there. Crimson onto the Trinex fight as John enters Turtle Rock. Still, still a good lead here. Um, but again, GT Big Key game could turn that around. Waiting for the shell to fall off, then we are home to phase three of Tronix. What do you call it, phase two? I would call this, uh, you want to call it phase three because it's three next. Um, it, it really is phase two. Uh, it, it, it really doesn't make much difference. Um, you, you could really make a case either way. Is Tronix in chat to verify? But, Crimson. Getting that seventh crystal, and you know what time it is for? It is time to start the big key guessing game. Ladies and gentlemen, one out of 22 checks in the basement of Ganon's tower has the big key required to proceed up the tower itself. Only one of these checks has that big key. Where will it be? Put your guesses now, number one through 22. Uh, yeah, dollar sign start also. I'm going, with I'm going to, I'm going to be on John's side. I'm going to guess how. You no, know I should have guessed three. You know. Hope room right, hope room left, tile room. But I, I went with my normal six. I wouldn't. I wouldn't see Crimson going for that. Crimson, Crimson's th really thinking he's still in it. Um, he, I mean, he might. Uh, but I, I would doubt it. Nobody d really does that. We see the powder that can that can help. Especially, especially if we see some spaghetti on the way up the climb. There's a convenient room with two, uh, and two opportunities for fairies right at the right sort of at the top. John's routing of Turtle Rock being much much better. Um, yeah, didn't find a key, so going into tile room doesn't. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Again, we're seeing those nerves come in. 
That's shape number three, which is just a uh, red brick. Uh, I would imagine John has the keys he needs since he's in this room and has two of them already. Might be looking for another sword, maybe. I don't know. Because uh, I remember when Crimson first got here, uh, Crimson had zero keys. Um, needed to get one from the big key chest and uh, steal the key, so I assume that John went and grabbed Set uh, four through seven is nothing. Got some keys. Tile room play is still on the table. Yeah, we're not going to see Dark Magician strats. The Dark Magician strats... I, I, I actually rather like the Dark Magician strats because, again, going right side is predicated on you finding a small key first to go through Tile Room. Uh, if you start on the left side like this, you're guaranteed to have a small key because there's one under the pot in the ha in the room that requires the hammer. Um, and with that, if you just go and do the Stalfos room, mirror back to the entrance, and then go um, right side with the with the key you're guaranteed to have it, it sort of hedges your bets you get a lot of checks pretty quickly the only thing you're sort of skipping out on uh is this chest that he's just, uh picking up right now the rando room which is rather deep in left side and the uh chest that we saw grab uh him grab earlier with the two fire rods going around it um so it's it's um you're skipping six six chests because the right side route sort of meets up later on, um, and it it can it can sort of it can pay off. That's what I'll say. Eh, and we find it in the rando room, which is uh, that's not an easy location to gain time on. I will say that. And uh, Adalor, our tracker extraordinaire, confirms that that is check eleven. And uh, <clears throat> Z Fox is the closest one to that guess. So, congratulations, Z Fox, on winning the big key guessing game today. So, now John could save time by skipping every chest and going straight for that one and opening it like right away. I don't think we're going to see that play. It's a very unconventional routing of uh, Ganis Tower Basement. And we also need keys. How many keys do you need to actually get to that spot? You, you could get enough guaranteed keys, couldn't you? You don't have to waste the one, you know, checking that room with the fire bars. You don't have to... You get the two under pots. However, yeah, uh, so... Crimson does have one key. That's another thing that's important. Uh, that could have come into play if uh, Crimson had seen that big key, breathed a sigh of relief. You... In that kind of mental state, you could see somebody go all the way up the tower before realizing they need to go get another key from the basement. It's happened to me. It's happened to lots of people when they first start out. Uh, you have to remember that you have to bring a key up with you from the basement. Chris is making the good uh, work through the through the gauntlet right now. Combo of fire rod and just straight up sword slash. But yeah, even even if John doesn't end up closing this gap, uh, this is. A, a very respectable, you know, have, having closed this lead. And that's going to be off of, you know, keeping that mental, keeping in the game, making sure you don't pile mistakes on mistakes on mistakes. Um, because you, you see how close they're both in Ganon's tower. And, and it's not even a Crimson just starting to climb as, as John is just starting the basement search. Uh, it's, it's, it's a couple minutes, sure, but a far cry from what it looked like earlier in this seed. Yeah, and uh, Chris powdering that anti-fairy, so that's going to throw off the cycle on uh, um, Lambo 2 here. Yeah, you, you see there, there's still an opportunity for a one cycle, uh, but you know it, it sort of relies on that that last one to sort of stay out of the ground a little bit. Yeah, giving up on the arrows, it seems. And right now it's just execution so it's gonna be 
depending on how well John executes this, it's gonna be really cool. Yeah, we could we could see uh, we could see some some time loss from Crimson here on Moldorm too. It's a very uh, easy boss to lose time on. Moldorm falls do happen. Uh, I can say that from the. Yeah, the basically, the only way that you can play well enough to guarantee it won't happen. Ooh. We John checking the test in a different order, picking up the Butter Sword. So that that's going to be some time save on Ganon. Uh, given the level of execution that we've seen here, I would imagine that uh, Crimson is probably going to be unlikely to get the uh, optimal Tempered Sword Ganon fight. Uh, it's much easier to get the optimal cycles on the first couple phases if you have that Golden Sword. And Crimson needing to pick up the key from that... Um, that Helmus are there, as will John. But John starting his climb as Crimson is approaching Moldorm 2. This, this could be a little bit interesting with, with that Butter Sword pickup. And John doing definitely a more optimal strat for that first. Yeah, some people some people really have trouble with this Mimic Room. Uh, it's In my experience, it's not too difficult, but you sort of have to have a handle on the way those Mimics move. And the second one, especially with those BMOs, can can throw you off if you're if you're focusing too hard on on set, lining up your shots. Um, the way I tend to think about it is, you know, you sort of just vaguely line it up and fire an arrow and walk the mimic into it as you line up the next shot. Uh, it and you know, I don't I don't ace it every time by any means, but uh, it, it's it's never been a room that's given me frustration. And Crimson, ooh, it got a very good Moldorm fight. I looked away at John's stream for a second and I missed it. So, uh, unfortunately, no time save there. All right, let's see how I get to it. As John enters the gauntlet, uh, taking the guaranteed single hit there. Maybe an opportunity for a double here. Uh, nope. Wrong comment. Yeah, this is this is an interesting. Uh, I love this Aghanim two boss fight because there's there's so much you can do in terms of uh, you know trying to you have to quickly sort of think okay how do I get the best angle? Uh, so that's something that you don't really have to think about unless you're racing. Um, it doesn't really matter. You just play it safe every time if you're just playing casually. Um, but you look at where they're going, think about the timing of your shots and how you can juke them to get those hits in. I don't think any doubles, but uh, yeah, a nice, a nice safe Ogden too. Uh, those, those were not some very friendly patterns. Yeah, no room to fight the big pig. Yeah, so this is, uh, this should be pretty safe. But uh, again, at the end of a race that's gone like this, with all the, the, the struggles in, uh, in Turtle Rock, maybe uh, GT has has gone smoothly enough to maybe clear his head a little bit. But um, you you can mess up on Ganon. Uh, usually, uh, red mail tempered sword silvers is uh, comfortable as it comes, but uh, you can still mess it up. Now I'm curious, what is Crystal's potion situation? Cause he's used a couple of potions in this clock. Hey, good question. Um, you uh. We're not too concerned about magic here. He maybe you are if you don't have any magic potion safeties and you're using this uh, cape strat here. But uh, I, I do like this from Crimson. Take the pressure off this Ganon fight. Uh, the last thing you need here is more pressure to execute. And yeah, nicely done onto phase three as John is uh, approaching the uh, back nine of Ganon's tower here. Yeah, there. If we, if this were to be close, Crescent would need to take a fall. Yeah, and that, that can happen, especially if you start thinking, okay, you know, phase four is free, I've got silvers. Uh, if you start getting greedy and trying to line up for double hits at, at the wrong time, or you uh, misjuke a fire bat, um, you, could, uh, you could be looking at an unfortunate fall, especially here with uh, not setting up the torch glitch. Uh, it, it's generally not required if you've got the silvers, but one of the things that can happen when that fire goes out 
is you don't see where Ganon is, you don't know where the bat's coming from, and it can catch you if you're lining up for a fire odd light. Because the game forces you to stand right next to the edge to light those torches. Ooh, fantastic double hit, and Crimson locks in that victory. Get your GGs in chat. Uh, Crimson Polosh finishing with a official race time of 2.13.45. It looks like uh, it's already already locked in on that uh, on, on the race room. Yep, 2.13.45. A little, little bit ahead of the curve here. But yeah, very well done. Didn't choke in the final moment. Uh, props to Crimson there. Uh, John making very good time, not too far behind. Which, again, I'd like to bring everybody's attention considering the enormous deficit that John was at for almost the entire seat is, is remarkable here. This race in general, like, is a testament to just mental um mental uh endurance. yeah i would say this is one to study honestly for for a new racer this is a very good uh illustration of you know how things aren't always exactly how they feel exactly how they seem um it, i mean it didn't it didn't play out but you can see how real a comeback can be even when it looks as hopeless as it does the fact that john is so close despite going all the way down Samarialis Ice Palace with no hammer it is and to only, still be this close is is something to learn from and, and John finishing up um Agatu heading into the pit to fight the big pig uh, I expect this fight hopefully to be a little bit quicker since he does have that gold sword yeah, although I will say it was it was pretty quick on Crimson side. Uh, very nice phase one and phase two. Excellent use of the cape there. Uh, sometimes it can be a, a little uh, you're a little worried about the cape, but with uh, half magic and maybe some safeties in the pocket, you're not too worried about it. Oh, I yeah. see. You do have Crimson in the green room. I don't I don't know if uh, they're uh, powdering their nose or, or what in there, but uh, it, we might see them come in. Uh, for the moment, though, let's just watch this Ganon fight. Uh, that butter slur slices through Ganon like, like butter. We see John demonstrating a, a very unobvious property of the magic cape. If you're holding onto a wall, uh, the game doesn't know how to tick down your magic. So uh, just uses that to stay safe. He knew he did enough hits, so he didn't need to hit him anymore. Just uh, make sure you don't get hit by those bats. You know, a little extra safety. Let's see if uh, John goes for the torch glitch or will oh, he's going to go for torch glitch. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people will skip it to try to get that uh, that hit in. Um, you can get an early hit in. You most definitely have to forego torch glitch for it. Uh, torch glitch being when you light that first torch before the second one goes out. There's a slight delay and uh, then the second torch just stays lit forever because the game forgets to uh, start putting it out. It can make it easier. As I mentioned, you can see where Ganon is at all times. Um, but again, you can... Oh, nice double hit. Uh, and John. John getting ready to finish. Yeah, he finishes up that Ganon fight with that double. Uh, put your GG some tap for him. As soon as he walks through this door, he'll be done. And John will finish with an official race time GG time of 2 hours, 17 minutes, 23 seconds. Get those GGs in chat. So interesting to note again that is uh if i do my math correctly that's under four minutes i believe yeah it's uh just over three <laughs> so yeah that is uh that is a cl much closer race than it looked like for about 60 percent of it and we have crimson our victor hey. here entering the chat room GG Crimson. So, uh, thank you. I have one question before we get started with the rest of our interview. Yeah, How what's that? Is your brain right now. My brain is fried. 
<laughs> in fact, we, probably fr Fried is too generous right now with the mistakes I was making in that one. Oh, I was, I, I was, I'm, I'm gonna rewatch this one, but I'm probably gonna be beating myself up as I'm rewatching. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I, I won't, uh, I, I think we're gonna be joined here eventually by, um, John. Yeah, in, he in said he was gonna here. be in, like, I'm not going minutes. to spoil exactly what happened for you. I'm gonna <laughs> let John tell you what we were watching this whole match. Um, okay. Because uh, it, it's gonna, it's gonna explain a lot of things about how, how did you win with, especially that Turtle Rock performance. Uh, I imagine the tension was running really high on the back half of that. Yes, it was. I've never had to backtrack twice in Turtle Rock, ever. And then dying in Ice Palace, running out of bombs. Oh, Ice Palace was just not I imagine Ice Palace was when it started. <laughs> that was when it started <laughs> setting in. That, that's when you're like, there's no way that I, that I, I could be ahead after this. You know, there's you don't ever expect to make a mistake like that. Um, no, I was definitely psyching myself out on that, and I had to get my, I had to refocus. There was a, a moment where I was waiting for a cutscene, and I'm like, okay, just breathe. You're stressing yourself out. <laughs> yeah, and, and as we're watching that Turtle Rock, you know, it's like, oh, look at look at these mistakes there, you know. But I've I've seen myself do the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. And here we have John. John, welcome. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was like the end of a GDQ. I just kept saying, my heart, my heart, my heart for the last <laughs> minutes of that speed. Yeah, I, I want to ask you the same question I asked Crimson. How is your brain right now? I just, I made so many galaxy brain, so many galaxy brain plays there, especially early on, but it didn't matter because Hookshot was on pyramid ledge and just that meant no of course i'm gonna go to death mountain there's like 10 checks up here what are the odds of you know hammer being in pod like you know it always is when you play nmg yeah that kind of sucked uh yeah so i didn't spoil this <laughs> earlier uh john why don't you tell uh crimson what happened uh, when you went to ice palace for the first time uh, well, I forgot that you don't need hammer, or that you need hammer to, like, clear more than two checks in it. And my thought was, let me clear as many checks as possible. And then I, I stopped and I said, oh, wait, I don't have hammer. I, I IPBJ'd uh, two out of three attempts. Yeah, your your IPBJs were, were much cleaner than, than Crimson's. Uh, no offense meant, Crimson. That's a, oh, it's a hard trick. But none, props none to taken. John on those IPBJs. Those oh, yeah, yeah. Very I well just, done. Once a week, I just you know go into the the practice hack and just try it like 15 times yeah you you guys probably don't remember specifically but uh two out of the three ice palace checks were hammer locked without samaria so uh <laughs> that uh that's the yeah. kind of depth that john was working with for uh, this basically yeah, this i just raced that yeah i i don't even think the death in thieves town like i'm doing the math and i'm pretty sure just dying on blind there because i didn't realize i had two hearts uh, I'm pretty sure that didn't cost the difference. I'm pretty sure Crimson would have won by about 30 seconds if I had beaten Blind the first time. Well, uh, you want to hear my saga of Ice yeah, Palace, John? You, you tell your story here. So I happened to... I was going to go into Ice Palace and then remembered I needed the hammer, so I went to Pod instead. Then I go to Ice Palace, make my way all the way through doing the Ice Palace bomb jump after failing like five, seven times and having to use a potion. Then I get to cold stare and I die. So I start going through Everyone. again. Yeah, I, I start going through again and uh, get to the spot for the ice palace bomb jump. And I only had two bombs and I ran out. So I had to back out <laughs> and go do, I, that's at that point I went and did swamp, but it's like, I had a feeling that was going to be the end of me there. <laughs> oh man, that swamp chest. I went back in there. I'm like, you know what? The progression's in this big chest. I'm going back in. <laughs> yeah, I almost orphaned that. I think we thought you that. deliberate about going back in before fighting Argus. It was, well, I, I lost on week two by that exact like that exact check. So I said, you know what? I, I once been a million times shy. Yeah, because right after you got that big key, it looked like you were debating going up back up the stairs and opening it right then and there. 
Uh, it, it looked like you were spooked by that jellyfish a little bit, and maybe yeah. you said it on. I was thinking about back. going back, and I was like, oh, Amerith is at home. She's in the room. I can't ask her which one's quicker. <laughs> yeah, it, it Especially, would, probably oh, would have been quicker to, to go back up and, and get it, but that sort of requires the knowledge that it's and, the one thing oh, you needed in that rather that. than in the two that are still to come. Yeah, I, that that meant, I, meant I never would have checked green pendant, which meant I might have actually... Yeah, yeah no, I all through that back I half. Orphaned, I almost orphaned that the big chest in yeah, Swamp. Yeah. All through the end of all right, that well, speed, Crimson was a <laughs> Crimson was a was losing time to nerves. So that that was a very close race. Yeah, that oh, was. Oh, there was two have lost nerves. For... <laughs> I'm just gonna say that this is a a run that. Anybody in this race should watch just for mental fortitude. I think if I were playing the three, I, I would just be pulling my non-existent. No, real mental fortitude would have been going into uh, Pendant Skull Woods uh, a couple trips earlier into that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this one. I, I, I had said before you came on, John, but I was... I was beating myself up a lot with some of just the stupid mistakes I was making along the way. And oh, I wanna, me, it was all right. I, I want to say it was the there was the cut scene in pod where I'm just like, OK, take a deep breath. You're stressing yourself out. <laughs> Calm down. Just keep doing the best that you can. And then I go to Turtle Rock and I had to backtrack twice because I was low on keys. That was, Ooh, that was yeah, frustrating. I've been, I've, <laughs> I even skipped all of Laser Bridge because I'm like, you know what? What if there's no key on Laser Bridge? I don't know that that there that there has to be a key on Laser Bridge. So I made sure to go. I made sure to get the big key chest mm -hmm. or the big key big. And then I I uh, I stole the pokey key too. So I was I was in really good shape there. Boy, I thought I was I was blazing up there at the end. But boy, last locationing that that hammer. I believe that was the very last location or the second to last location it could have been in the whole. Eh, about the third last. But yeah. You know what I mean? It was it was in. I had no checks except uh, pod and my my spidey sense has just never tingled. I said, you know what? I don't think it's over here. I don't. Th I know pendant pod always has progression. I think tonight's the exception. And tonight, yeah, we were talking about that on stream. Actually, uh, just pendant pod it only locks one check behind behind items necessarily. So yeah, uh, it, if you're willing, it's to not do hard for the game to put items in there. It's like, oh, sure, you can get to this if you go this specific way, because the algorithm doesn't oh, yeah. care how inconvenient my, it is for my you. Brain said, <laughs> my brain said, okay, do I do I continue on to pod? And I should have, uh, because I still didn't have the hammer, and I should have thought, well, if hammer's in pod, I'm really screwed having to come back around this way again versus going up to the mountain. But I, I said, you know what? I keep putting off the mountain. I keep putting off the mountain. Uh, it's not healthy to do that as much as I was doing already. <laughs> As soon as I got hookshot, I went up and checked the mountain, and I don't think I've ever been so disappointed in Death Mountain checks. <laughs> Especially with Dark Dark Death Mountain in there, too. Just, man, oh, this too? Man. Hookshot? Yeah, well, you didn't have hookshot. Oh, yeah, you did have hookshot. Cave. Come on, Spike Cave, throw me a bone. <laughs> oh, this was a doozy. This was a doozy of a seed. So, so what does this uh, give you a chance of going into Bacon Bracket? I don't think so. Yeah, I know. Honestly, I, I didn't have a chance I don't either. Un Honestly, I don't understand the brackets all that well. <laughs> that's okay. You don't have to. You just uh, you just look at the the schedule at the end and say, "Oh, okay, that's where I am." Yeah. <laughs> all right. So now that the seed is over, what are y'all before? Practice, practice, practice. I am definitely going to get more practice in than I did this week before this race and um, just practice the Ice Palace bomb jump and uh, diver down with bombs. I oh, thought yeah, I had that down this afternoon and I just couldn't pull it off. But then again, I'm using a different sprite than what I practice with. So I think that's a problem there. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's an often overlooked uh, part about the sprites is uh, 
with those precise tricks, you, you got to know exactly where you are. Mm -hmm. A lot of people use the shadow for that reason. Is that one of the new sprites that just came out? Yeah, the Adol. It's my favorite ever since I saw he was up there. <laughs> but he doesn't have the, the hat like Link does, and that's how I was lining everything up with the Diver Down using bombs. Just just get a get a sprite that has the maximum height. It's great for lining stuff up. <laughs> other other than like how Peach's butt covers up a little bit of her shadow, everything else is great. <laughs> the same way that the the big old ponytails cover up the room. But y'all have anything else before uh, we get out of here? Uh, it's uh it's eleven o'clock by time. I know it's early for y'all. But... <laughs> no, it's hey. about time for me to to call it a night. But um, I do plan on streaming your Plando, Mocha Jones. Like I said, I'll let you know when I'm doing that. But otherwise, I guess really my big takeaway for anyone who's still watching this is. Just take a breath, calm down, don't stress yourself out because you make a lot more mistakes that way. <laughs> oh, yeah, and yeah. You, you never know what mistakes your opponent has made. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you, 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 don't you wanna, never know. You if don't want to psych yourself also. out, make more mistakes because you you feel you need to make up time. Uh, because it, it, when it comes down to it, the time for execution isn't isn't during a race. It's it's during the prep. Mm -hmm. If you can't do something at race time. Uh, you're not going to win a race off the back of it. It's it's generally not worth the gamble to to try something you sometimes get in practice. I, I mean, that was my best gauntlet I've ever done. Yeah, that was a good gauntlet. I'll have to see it. My gauntlet wasn't all that great. I kept the Beemos kept knocking me into the corners, driving me nuts. <laughs> but I mean, GG, John. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing our races side by side. Hey, maybe we'll see each other again in bracket. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it if that happens. All right, well, good night, everybody. Thanks for uh, thanks to the restreamer. Thanks to Team Captain Lumaga for for putting this all together. Thanks for Mocha and Esmer for for casting, and thank you Adelor for tracking. Uh, if there wouldn't have been a restream without you guys. Yes, thank you everyone who puts in the time and effort to make this happen. And thank y'all for being in this tournament and running this race. Uh, if you're not following, following our runners already or anybody that they just mentioned, give everybody a follow. Um, and don't forget to listen to the Go Mode podcast every two weeks. <laughs> the Go Mode podcast? Which yeah, asks... which day every two weeks? Uh, let's, let's be more specific here. Wednesday? Every day. It's trash day here. <laughs> All right, you heard it here first. Trash day. <laughs> Every trash day, Go Mode Podcast is live. <laughs> you know, I'm also, tired. Uh, I'd I like need to, to bring to everybody's bed. attention to. Uh, um, there's going to be uh, looks like another restream uh, tomorrow evening. Uh, if you're, you know, a, a yank like like I am, um, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern time uh, between. Hamden Blinde and Dr. Cossack. So if you're free, uh, uh, be sure to check that out. If you're not free, uh, try to loosen up your schedule so that you can go and check that out. Uh, I've been Esmar. This has been Mocha Jones, and uh, we're signing off for the night. Have a good one. Good night. Good night, everyone.